We're going to ignore the rules. We are not allow witnesses to ask the questions. Then, gentlemen, how we'll many see. other rules are you just going to disregard? That is not a, point, a cognizable point of order. And now let's slow down a bit here. The gentlemen, the gentlemen, let's slow down a bit here. So you need to call balls and strikes the right way. He, you don't interrupt either one of them, gentlemen, Chairman. You're, the well, you're, you're questioner or the witness. Bang it harder. It still doesn't make the point the that you're not doing it right. Do you see that Nather today cracked the little platform for the gavel? You see that? Cracked it. They had to bring in a new one. Uh, believe it or not, that wasn't the circus. It was the House Judiciary Committee Chair Nadler's second impeachment hearing on the Hill today. But that mockery of justice was only just the beginning. We're now learning that the Democrats intend to vote. I'm sorry I'm laughing. I know it's serious, but I don't, t I don't take any of these people seriously. Two of the articles impeachment tomorrow. Abuse of power. This is after we saw what the FBI did to Trump for two years. And obstruction of Congress. Wait, did they go to court to get a, a subpoena? No, they didn't. Joining me now, House Judiciary Committee members, Scalise, Ken Buck, along with House Minority Whip, uh, Scalise, excuse me, and Steve Shabbat. Uh, great to see all of you. Congressman Scalise, I, I went by the TV today and I said, am I watching? Wait a second, a bunch of politicians, mostly lawyers, interviewing committee lawyers. I've never seen anything like this. Your takeaway. When, from when today. a witness literally gets up oh from the witness table, runs over to the dais, and then asks another witness questions, I, people are just looking. Not, they're not looking. They're turning this off. Uh, they're tuning this out because I think they realize this is all about Nancy Pelosi holding on to power. They know that Donald Trump's done a great job. 260,000 new jobs created last month. They don't want this president to get reelected. They can't beat him on, on the merits, and so they've got to go down the road of impeachment. And that's what this is about. It's a farce. It's an embarrassment what they've been doing. And Our, I think people are seeing it. Congressman Chabot, you got, we'll go through these two articles of impeachment, but what happened to bribery? I mean, wasn't it bribery, extortion? They were throwing everything out like against the wall. That's all gone now. It's absurd. And, you know, the Democrats have been bound to determine to impeach this president since he was inaugurated, maybe even prior to him being inaugurated. You had one uh, Democrat, for example, who acknowledged that they had to impeach him or he might be reelected. I mean, it's all politics. And it's really a shame because it's bad for the country. There's so many other things that we aren't getting done. Like we had 68,000 people who died of... Uh, overdoses last year. Let's do something about that or our southern border. Prescription border. drug prices. And, prescription and, and drug. My, uh, my insurance went up another 8% yep. health insurance this year. Congressman Buck, uh, obstruction of Congress. Now, maybe my law school education wasn't as good as all of theirs, but you, they didn't go to court to get enforce a subpoena. How can this be obstruction of Congress when uh, the White House counsel basically says, we don't, we don't recognize this sham hearing. We're not going to participate. But they didn't go to court to get a decree. It's not obstruction at all. In fact, what's, what's so interesting to me about this is, uh, on the one hand, uh, Chairman Schiff and Chairman Nadler have refused to turn information over and have claimed the privilege. When President Trump claims a privilege, all of a sudden that's obstruction. Uh, they've obstructed our inquiry and, and our ability to, to gather information to try to bring out the truth. Yet, when President Trump does that legitimately, when he has conversations with the Secretary of State, those are privileged, the, the Attorney General, the, the Chief of Staff, but, but somehow he's obstructing when, when he asserts a privilege. They don't go to court to challenge that privilege, they just charge him with obstruction. Congress Scalise, I was thinking about this today. If anyone's guilty of obstruction of Congress, it's Adam Schiff. Yeah, look at what he I mean, did. I mean, I guess you can't if you're well, a of course of he Congress, didn't show up can today. you? <laughs> but he's kind of obstructed your ability to put on uh, defensive witnesses, despite yeah, their claiming the they would. Blower, after saying he was going to bring the whistleblower, you know, going back to the Mueller investigation, more than circumstantial evidence he said he had. He never had any because there wasn't any. Really, if you look at what happened last week, you want to talk about something, Laura, it's an abuse of power. He, we found out later, he was spying on members of the press, members of Congress. We don't know who else. I've heard reports that there are up to 3,500 pages of telephone records that Adam Schiff is sitting on, and he only selectively released it uh, against his political opponents, against Devin Nunes, against a conservative I want to see his phone records. Why isn't the press outraged, by the way, that he's spying on members of the press? Uh, their, their sources, all of their private information uh, is at risk. The FISA court itself is at risk when you talk about the abuses of power we saw from the FBI. I mean, well, let's, why don't you show yours, Congressman Schiff? I want to see who, who you were calling, Congressman Shabbat. Um, this really got crazy today, though, when you saw this back and forth between Gates and Goldman. Of course, one of the attorneys that was being questioned about his tweets in the past about the Steele dossier. There were only a few moments that really caught my attention. This was one of them. 
Do you regret this tweet? Sir, I would be happy to put my this investigation up with any of the nonpartisan investigations. I just want to know if you regret the tweet, Mr. Goldman. During my 10 years as a federal prosecutor. Do you regret it? I hope you read the evidence, and I think you can judge You either yourself, regret it or you don't. The tweet said nothing in the dossier, Congressman Shabbat was proven to be false, and that's the guy they're putting on today. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, it, you know, this hearing was pretty incredible. The thing that bothers me, though, is that impeachment is becoming too routine. routine. They've lowered the bar here. We had had one impeachment in about 200 years. Now, in less than 50 years, this is going to be the third one. My concern is every time you have a president that's a different party from the House, we're going to see impeachments more and more common. That's very damaging to the country, far too divisive. Congressman Buck, um, we've, we've heard a lot of things that are supposedly impeachable. But Congressman Green um, has now said slavery is part of the impeachable offenses list. Watch. We're moving forward in a cautious and prudent way, uh, which is what is expected. If we don't include some of the things that are important to people of color, we have to deal with slavery. Uh, slavery was the thing that put all of what President Trump has done lately into motion. Congressman Buck, care to explain that one? No. <laughs> I have no idea how tr President Trump's responsible for slavery. That's but does none of this surprises any of you, does it? Oh, no, I mean not at all. In fact, I think uh, Congressman Green said that we, we expect to have many more impeachment hearings if this one isn't successful. He also said you don't need an impeachable offense to impeach a president. And most importantly, he said, if we don't impeach President Trump, he'll get reelected. It's not about any impeachable offenses. It's about the fact they're scared he'll get reelected because their field is so weak and President Trump has done such a great job. Come on, Bloomberg's going to rescue them all. <laughs> Charming. Congressman, thank you. Great to see you all tonight.